It means that signal. We need more power. We're here at Origins, and I'm talking with Andrew Wolf, game designer, over at the USAopoly booth. And Andrew, yes. uh, I see a bunch of games here behind me, and I come to understand you've had a lot to do with these games. I have had some involvement with a couple of these. <laughs> yes, Thanos right. Rising in particular, if you want to start with that. Yes, let's talk Thanos Rising. Absolutely. So this is a cooperative dice and card game for two to four players, mm -hmm. all themed around the events and characters for the recent Avengers Infinity War movie. Uh, the object of the game is to try and thwart Thanos in his efforts to collect the six stones and power up the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, it's a co-op game where you're going to be rolling dice, assigning them to cards to try and recruit heroes and defeat villains, all in a race against time to stop Thanos before he can either wipe out the heroes or collect the Infinity Stones and snap his fingers. So, <laughs> so uh, how many players is it? It plays two to four players in about 60 to 90 minutes. Oh, not bad, not bad. Now, so what kind of characters are you able to play? Uh, so uh, you start as a leader of one of the four factions. Uh, so you can be Captain America leading the Avengers, Black Panther leading Wakanda, Gamora leading the Guardians of the Galaxy, or Doctor Strange leading sort of the masters of the mystical arts. Uh -huh. And you can recruit more heroes, basically all the characters that you're familiar with from the movie. So everybody from Wong and Drax and Groot to Falcon and Shuri and Okoye, they're all there and you can, it's sort of got a little bit of an engine building as you recruit new heroes, you're going to get new powers, you're going to work together and try and defeat the villains, the Black Order and the Outriders that are out there trying to wipe out the heroes uh, before they can thwart Thanos. Now how does Thanos uh work in this game. Sure, so he's sort of the focal point of the game, and uh, the, for the setup, you're going to deploy these characters in what's called the deployment zone, that are sort of encircling Thanos, and he's in the center of a little uh, player card okay. that is going to rotate each turn, that's going to determine where his actions and his attacks are going to go, uh, through the roll of a couple of dice. It's also indicate which stone he's working on collecting, so there's this sort of race mechanic where you're trying to defeat the villains before Thanos can accomplish his master plan. So the pressure mounts, the pressure luck elements of the dice uh, all kind of factor in for some really fun cooperative gameplay. That's cool. So it's a cooperative, but it does, is. can one, does everybody win or does one yeah, it's, it's fully win co-op. It's okay. No, it's fully co-op. Everyone wins or loses as a team. Oh, that's, that's, that's cool. Cool. And I like the, uh, definitely got some great artwork. So we'll take a look, closer look. Huh? It's in 3D! <laughs> Ooh. Scary! I also see uh, Deadpool versus the world. What's Deadpool yeah. versus the world? So this is a really fun light party game. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got that fam familiar sort of submit answers. One person plays as the judge and chooses their favorite answer from amongst all the submissions each round. So very familiar on sort of casual party game mechanics. The fun things about it are it's got custom illustrations with Deadpool, Deadpool and all these outlandish scenarios. And the players get to caption and describe what's going on in these situations. How did Deadpool get himself into these mess? Like, don't judge, I can explain. And as a player, you're going to help explain his way out of these situations. The other cool thing about it is, unlike other games of this fashion, players get to make their own content because the caption cards have blanks that players get to fill in with wet erase markers. So you get to really help tell the story and insert your own personality into the game. <laughs> so is this more of a PG-13 related uh, it, game? Certainly. I mean, you can see from this kind of stuff, this gives you an inkling of the kind right. of illustrations, the situations <laughs> uh, that you're going to find Deadpool has gotten himself into. And the players can really make it as edgy as they want to because they get to generate their own content with those caption cards. Okay, and now this is out now? Yes, these are, games are both available now. Oh, I see. Uh, ages 17 and up. Well, there you go. R-rated. <laughs> three, uh, three plus players. So how many yeah. players can you go up to? Uh, you really can play as many players as you want. Yeah. The game includes a ton of content for... Um, oops, he's handing me this. Uh, up to six players with markers, uh, but you can pass those markers around and share. And really, as many people as you've got, it's just the more the merrier. It's a big fun party for everyone. There we go. There we go. 
Uh, oh, and look at this? let us talk about Samurai Jack. Yes. Here we go. So this is a game that um, we just wrapped up development on. This is a pre-production sample hot off the presses that we will have shipping in time for Gen Con. Uh, so we've got nice. some... Uh, so software. you have time to plan ahead. Yes. Um, and I don't know if you want to take a look at it. We've got the components out there. We will. Uh, but um, this is a competitive game for three to five players where you're working to help Samurai Jack get back to the past. So for fans of the show, maybe people who aren't familiar, Samurai Jack has been flung into the future by Aku, this evil shape-shifting demon overlord that has kind of ruined the planet. And Jack is on an a endless mission, basically, to try and right all the wrongs. Uh, so as the players, you're kind of coming into the story, helping Jack in his quest to reforge his sword and collect the necessary uh, assets, other allies, and support cards to defeat villains and hopefully, ultimately, defeat Aku. And then the player who has helped him the most along the way, has earned the most honor points, is going to be victorious at the end. Okay, so it's semi-cooperative then? There are some cooperative elements because you do have to help Jack out, but it is competitive in nature. There is one winner, whoever helps him the most and has earned the most glory and honor along the way is ah, going to be the one that's going to win. There we go. So, and I like the artwork. It's very reminiscent of the show. Yes, well, all the art is taken directly from the show. Nice. So it's all from screen stills and supplied art from uh, Cartoon Network. Perfect. Now, how many players and uh, how long does it take to play? Uh, it plays two to five. I think I misspoke. Two to five players and plays in about 45 minutes. You play three rounds. Each round takes about 15 minutes. So 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, great. And that will be coming out at Gen Con. Yes. All right, so plan ahead. Now, is there anything else we need to mention here? Uh, I mean, we have a whole bunch of other Marvel stuff that we've had in our line for a little while now, but for those who might not be familiar with it, um, we partner with Czech Games for Code Names, which I think many people uh, who are familiar with the industry have probably experienced. Right. So this is our Marvel version of it, uh, and it's really cool because uh, if you take a look at this, it has both words and pictures. This is the picture side, but you flip it over, it has words. So you can play it with the familiar word style of play uh -huh. or the code name picture style of play. And the story is you have rival teams of Hydra and Shield agents trying to uncover your agents before the other team does, and all while trying to avoid the assassin, which in this game is actually Thanos, uh, who would wipe everyone out if you reveal him. Right. Uh, so it's a bit the same style of gameplay where you're trying to give clues to your team, one word clues, and they have to identify which cards on your grid belong to your team. Uh, yeah, it's nice to have a Marvel license. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. And we also, you also see we've got uh, a whole line of Munchkin product, uh, including uh, a Deadpool expansion, uh, an X-Men core game, a full Marvel core game, and then some other Marvel expansions there. And you can mix and match like any of the Munchkin games and combine them as you like. So if you have all of this, basically you're going to get the entirety of the Marvel Universe in a really fun Munchkin game. I like this. Deadpool. Just Deadpool. I mean, he, he <laughs> marries it all by himself. He doesn't play well with others. Right. But you can play him with the rest of the stuff. He will find a way to work himself in, of course. All right. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me today, and we are looking forward to seeing Samurai Jack at Gen Con. And uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.